What's up, YouTube? I am back with another paleo video because I'm addicted, period. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. Send help, send rescue, you know? But by the title of this video, you guys, I'm gonna just be sharing some of the things that I wish I knew before starting out in paleo because it is kind of like an MMO. There's a lot of things that you have to be mindful of, a lot of things that you want to know, take in consideration, when you're going about your day or gameplay in the game. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, guys, so the first tip that I wanna know, like, or basically let you guys know is know your way, bro. The map is big, the map has different sectors. So this is the Kilima sector, which has the Kilima village, right? This is basically where you originally come. Your house is in this area. Um, this is where everything is over in this area is the next area, which is Bahari Bay. If you have watched my other video, you guys know that this is the spot. OK, anyways, know your way, know your map. Also know that you can do set waypoints just by hitting on your mouse button right here as it's shown and you can remove it, place it anywhere, do what you want to do with it. But set waypoints because it is kind of hard to navigate through the map um i would say so let's try to set a waypoint if you're not comfortable with the map as of yet mark your npcs if you know that you need to talk to somebody so like right now i need to go talk to ashura i mark him even though i kind of know the area that he's in mind you these 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 villagers they move quick so <laughs> mark them and just follow them as you go we're soaring flying you feel me I'm going to Ashura and I have his waypoint set and I normally would say like keep it until I'm like basically right by his side. OK. Another thing when it about when it comes to knowing your way, you can always return home. I wanted to do this and show you guys you have a time time cap of 30 minutes in real life. So you would have to wait 30 minutes in order to use this again. But this is not your only way of transportation and of using a fast travel. I'm going to show you another way. All right, guys. So this is another form of fast travel. If you look at here, these are called the stables. You paid 10 gold to go home. You can go to the Bahari Central stables if you don't want to feel like walking all the way over there. Um, Kilima, like this is a good form of transportation. A best way to find it is honestly just any of these points where you see like the hooves and what is this called the hoof the horse hoof i don't know y'all will correct me correct me in the comments anytime you see this type of icon that's where you know that there is a fast travel point so use that to your fullest ability especially if you're a little you know rich on money like it's not gonna hurt you if you spend 10 gold to go home or 25 or however much you need to uh get to where you're going all right, guys, so the next tip I'm going to give you guys is prioritize upgrading your bag when you first get in the game. I understand when you first get in the game, you're going to be broke. We get that. All right. But I think the first backpack is 500. The second backpack is 5000. I'm not buying that because I only got 5000 right now and I'm not in the need to upgrade my bag. But please, when you first get in the game, you want to prioritize this being the first thing that you spend your money on, which is going to be upgrading your bag to the second level, which is 500 coins. Now I'm about to show you guys the third <laughs> most important tip in this game, which is getting money. So let's get into all the ways that you can make money in this game. All right, guys. So as soon as you get into the game, you're going to want to hunt. The first thing you're probably going to see are these choppas. They're good for their tail as well as their fur. You'll see the deers. They're good for antlers as well as their fur. Now, keep in mind, you're going to get meat. I do recommend probably holding on to the meat so that way you can later cook with that meat. That's going to help you build up your focus points, which is something we're going to talk about later. One thing I want to point out as well, there are different types of deers as well as choppas. The first deer you may come across is going to look like this. These deers are amazing for their antlers, okay? And then you'll see the deer on the left-hand side, which is gray. Perfect. And when I say perfect, 
I mean, you get the bang for the book when it comes to that antler. Rare meat, awesome fur. This is this is where your money is. Now, just keep in mind, because they are more rare, obviously they're going to be harder to hunt. So when you first start, it may be a little bit more difficult, but as you do level up in the game, you'll be able to catch them. So don't even worry about it. So just keep in mind, there's three types of deers and also three types of choppas, okay? So the skin color are basically the same when it comes to the choppa. You get a better tail, um, you get better fur. All right, guys, so the next thing that's gonna help you get some money is fishing. Um, what I do recommend when it comes to fishing is look for the bubbles if you can. Like how I'm doing right now, you see there's a bubble. Look for the bubbles when fishing. Add on a piece of worm um, for bait. And that's really about it. You can keep some of the items that you get. You'll get some starred item fish. You can use that to sell that. Or you can also keep it and use it for food. All right, and then the next thing we're gonna get into is gonna be bug catching. This is a good way to make money as well. You wanna keep your eye out for the glowing bugs as you see on this one. Just throw your smoke bomb at them. They may require more than one smoke bomb, but you can use the loot that you get from them to sell it or you can keep it as decoration. All right guys, so another great money maker. This is what I would like to call passive income, which is gardening, right? So some people keep the vegetables, some people sell the vegetables. What I like to do or what I'm learning, I guess you can say, is that I keep some of them and then I sell some of them, right? I only keep some of them just for me to cook with and then the rest of them, I sell it. Um, so it's to each its own. You can do what you want with them basically, but you get a good bang for your buck for them. All right, guys, one thing that I wish I kind of knew ahead of time, because I went crazy when I first started was requesting items, right? So you can come to here and request four items, but each item you have requested after you've claimed that item, um, it's a 24 hour time gap. So if you reclaim this item, let's say 1 p.m. today, you won't be able to request another item at until 1 p.m. the following day. So keep that in mind. You can only do four at a time and there's a 24 hour gap on them. And just keep in mind, like be smart about it when you're requesting these items. Like don't request no plant fiber. I just was helping a friend out with this for a quest. Uh, don't request really iron ore because it's like there are, there are an abundance of them throughout the village. Um, so just keep in mind, try to somebody messed up and gave me some dispel arrows that's all i'm gonna say but just keep in mind of the things that you are requesting when it comes to the make sure that it's worth it because as i said you only get four in a day and there's a 24 hour gap on it time limit on it so just keep that in mind all right guys one thing i'm gonna also say as well upgrade your tools as soon as you can like right now i am about to upgrade my tools i only have standard items i believe I have this makeshift belt as well as the makeshift hoe, right? Don't really care about it. It's fine. But upgrade your, your tools as soon as possible. And if you didn't um, know already, you can move these around. So you don't have to keep them in the center um, or anything like that. You can move them around as best. Um, I, try to, like, I try to keep my bow in the middle just because that's the first thing that it goes to. And, you know, I'm about that action. I'm about what? about that action y'all what another great thing that i don't know <laughs> i don't know if i was the only person right but it's x to unequip the item you guys if you're ever just like don't want to be walking around just click on x and you'll be able to unequip okay all right one thing that is probably the key focal point okay and i gotta lead by example right now keep food on you guys keep food on you not only keep food on you keep your focus up okay when i say this you want to keep that purple thing you see at the top left hand corner you want to keep that thing full at all times if you can especially when you're going hunting you're doing anything that requires xp keep that up and try to keep at least some food on you to where while you are hunting or while you are gardening bug catching fishing whatever the case may be keep your focus points up okay all right guys so if you remember this area um you would know that this is basically where you first spawned when you started the game right 
Everybody knows this dragon, this beautiful, beautiful dragon. What you want to do is come here every time you can and give to the communion, right? So you're giving the offering to the Phoenix. What this does, it does increase your focus points. Um, also, speaking of renown, for people that don't know, you're capped with your renown at a thousand. So you're kind of forced to spend it regardless of what you do. Ways to get renown is through request, um, doing the request for people that are in the server and the gifts that they want. Another way is just going through quest. You get it through certain level ups that you may have, but come here and just spend your renown so that way your focus bonus can increase and it just helps you out. All right, guys, so we're going to get into the fun part, right, which is decorating, okay? Decorating in this game is amazing. Take, for instance, this tent. You see, I have everything inside of the tent. You can literally just move only the tent and everything will stay. OK, another thing too. let's see what we can do here. Can we move the tent right here? Everything stayed inside the tent. Now, if you want to take decorating from a bird's eye view, all you have to do is press H. You press H. Let's move the tent back move put it back where we found it right but yeah you can do this with just about anything that's on your plot you can move it from here also keep in mind um decorating in this game is amazing you can place things on top of one another right so i have the pink what is this a vase a vase whatever you can place that on top of it as long as there's a yellow indicator right here you can place it on top um, even with the aquariums right here, you can place them on top of each other as long as it's basically the same. I can't place it on top because of that flower pot, but you can place things on top of one another. Also, if something is already on top of one another, you can move it as well. So that's pretty cool. I feel like the decorating in this game is going to be so much fun. You have different views, different angles. You can turn the grid off by pressing Z, right? Turn it back on. You can get into decorating mode by pressing control and you can get into the bird's eye view by pressing H, right? So just take that in consideration. Also, for those that, for those that do not know yet, okay, you can have more than one plot, which means technically you can have more than one house. Just keep in mind, it's going to be geared towards the one that you have. So you can switch up your houses if, if that's what I'm trying to say. Basically, you can switch up the houses. You can add on to the houses. If you haven't gotten that far yet in the game, you can definitely add on to the houses and to enable to un unlock these areas. You need what's called a writ and a writ can be bought at the city hall. OK, that's in the village of Kilima. You can buy a writ to then unlock this, these grid blocks in City Hall. OK, all right, guys, I'm just throwing these tips at you. You feel me? But the next tip I'm going to tell you guys is to start leveling up time. your characters, your NPCs. I'm sorry. Start leveling up your NPCs from now on. And all you have to do is just basically talk to them once a day. Um, well, you know, talk to the ones that matter the most to you, in my opinion, right? Like, I want to build a relationship with Kenyatta, okay? So, I know that I want to build a relationship with Kenyatta, so what that means is that I have to make sure that I have a conversation with her once a day, uh, right? Every day, and then also, uh, we want to figure out about giving her a gift, right? So Kenyatta sometimes is a little uh, with the gifts and look, yeah, yeah. We're going to just have to come back. She likes pebbles, I believe, like shiny pebbles as well. Um, I've been trying to figure out if you guys know a good gift for Kenyatta. Tell me, let's see. OK, well, she'll take an arrow. She'll take an arrow. I don't think she liked the arrow. But she'll take the arrow. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, another cool thing to, do anyway. to take into consideration, right? Each character has their own weekly wants, and it's up to you to have those conversations with them every day and chat it up with them to understand what they want for the week. So I do know I've been trying to get 
Hassan up as well because I do want to have a relationship with him. So we've been working on Hassan. Hassan wants Flint for the week. And who else? I think Badru. Me and Badru is pretty cool. Oh, Jinya. Me and Jinya are pretty cool. So she wants Flint. It looks like everybody wants Flint. You want me to be honest with you? Oh, I haven't figured out Badru's weekly wants. But pay attention to their weekly wants as it does help you. And it gives you like reward points like the renown and certain stuff like that. So talk to your talk to your villager members okay talk to the people them all right guys so the last and final tip that i'm gonna give to you right now is party up with your friends if you make any friends or party up with people that are just in your servers as it can definitely help you out when it comes to hunting fishing mining you name it you guys can share the resources and it, you can build on that okay so party up with members one thing i did want to tell you that i, I kind of noticed in order to server sync with somebody right if i was to server sync with uh tinker lily or let's say um nostalgia nerds right we need to be in the same map and when i say same map i mean if nostalgia is in bahari bay i won't be able to server sync with her i would need to go to bahari bay and then server sync with her okay so keep that in mind you can stay in a party with somebody you can definitely be in a party with somebody and be in different maps but you cannot be in the same server and be in different maps so as soon as you guys separate and go to a different map that's when the server sync is going to go away okay so just keep that in mind all right guys so that's basically it for all the tips i hope these were you know entertaining <laughs> and helpful for you guys as you guys journey throughout paleo um just keep also in mind that this is beta access so things are actually subject yo why is he so loud yo calm down <laughs> just keep in mind that this is beta access so these tips may be subject to change as the game does involve or evolve i guess you can say um so just keep that in mind guys if any of these tips have helped you or you're using some of these tips that i have given you today please smash that bu like button smash the like button and consider subscribing to the channel other than that, y'all, I'm out. Thank you for another one.